Hello and welcome to Paxton Road TV. I am Sam Spurs for Life and this is Talking Points, your weekly magazine show where we wrap up everything Spurs. And we all know we've got loads and loads and loads of things we could talk about with Spurs. It's just a merry-go-round of news things that we can do. But I'm joined, as usual, by some super special guests I've got in the house. Mike Hotspur Hustler, Darius Freake, Sid Spurs and Mr K at Three Wise Men. Welcome, gentlemen. How are you all? Yeah, not bad, mate. Not bad. Good. Yeah. Fabulous. Good to see you guys. Good to see you guys. Stuff in there. Um, hold on one second. Just edit a couple of bits and pieces whilst we're doing that. Yes, it is um, Spurs. Spurs. We're talking, and I'm going to get it right, Fabio Paratici. Almost, almost. Paratici. 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 There we go. Paratici. I'm not Italian, although, you know, I'd like to think I've got a little bit of Italian. So, but I'm not. Show, mate, you'll be free <laughs> Italian. Paratici. Fabio Paratici. Paratici. Um, so we're going to look at, um, obviously, this new director of football. Not 100% confirmed as yet. Well, certainly nothing has come out on Spurs official as yet. Uh, but we are certainly on that road and it looks like everything is, is all but done. But we've been here before with those sorts of things. But anyway, I think this one is pretty much done. But before we get into this show, make sure you guys who are watching, like, subscribe, share, comment, pack some people. We want you, we need you to be hitting that like button, hit that subscribe button. If it's your first time, make sure you do share all our content as much as possible. Helps us grow. We're now over 400 subscribers on the road to 500. So please keep supporting us. And thank you very, very, very much for watching. Let's get into this now. Gentlemen, so the opening question. I guess it's the opening question because it's uh, the one that's on the graphic. What will Paratici, Fabio Paratici, bring to Spurs? Mike, what will he bring to Spurs? Oh, it's me. First up. Yeah, um, I like putting you on the spot. <laughs> you have put me on the spot. Um, what would he bring to Spurs? It's a good question because I, I think he's probably, well, to a certain extent, he's, he's relatively um, probably unknown to, to many in the in. England, um, to a certain extent, uh, but the guy loves a freebie, doesn't he? Um, and he gets players, he does get a, from what we I know you'll bring it up in a minute with um, some stats behind him, etc. But uh, he bring he loves a good deal, which is obviously up Levy Street. Um, I know you'll go into as I say, players as well, um, and who he's brought in and who he's sold, etc. But um, I would hope. I would hope he brings some sort of vision to Tottenham that we as fans have been crying out for. I know probably we might not see that straight away. Um, I hope that he will start clearing out the dead wood, um, which all us fans have been have been crying for, um, and raise funds from the players that he that he, that he does sell, and with those funds. Hopefully, hopefully, I know this is Levy and this is Enoch we're talking about, but hopefully that those funds that are raised from any player sales um, would be reinvested. They'd have to be reinvested back into the squad because um, the squad otherwise would be too, it'd be too small to compete in what four competitions next year. Um, so I, I'm open-minded with him. Um, I, I like. I hope everyone sort of just gives him a chance to see what he's about. Um, and hopefully Levy will uh, give him a chance to to show what he can he can do with the club and um, put his marker down. I mean, if he can do anything like he has done with Juventus over the last what is it nine years, nine seasons, um, and he's put them back on the map to being successful. So if he can do anything near to what he's achieved at Juventus, then surely that's a good thing for Tottenham, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, good, good opening game. I'll ask the same thing of you, Darius. What will Paratici bring to Spurs? A little bit of football and knowledge upstairs. And I think that's probably the most important thing that we could ask for at the moment. It's, It seems, and I'm saying it seems because, again, I'm now at the point where I don't really know what, what to trust from the board's mouth. So it seems like Levy's sort of acknowledged that he doesn't really know the football side of things as much as he thought he did. And he's bringing in a guy who clearly does know what he's doing to kind of maybe fix a mess that Levy's, Levy's made and yeah. he, he's he, I've heard that he's he's very very much pivotal in in the new manager choice so that that also makes me a lot 
more op- optimistic about the choice being made that's right. I think mm-hmm. that the freebies is a good shout on on what you said, Mike. I think he's brought in, and it's not it's not necessarily players on a free who are like Willian, who is just at the end of their contract. No. It's players who who have still got something left in them and they might be 32 years old like a Perlo or they might be 27, 28 like Ramsey in their prime. So he's got a very good eye for 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 seeing potential deals and bargains here. So I think that all those things are kind of what Daniel Levy is looking for. I do hold a little bit of doubts because we sort of only seem to be talking about him when the Conte room is sort of rose and I didn't really see any sort of uh, talks about uh, Paratici becoming director of football before that. And I do still believe there are a couple of other better options that we could have made if we were to appoint a director of football, but to say that we've got one or well, hopefully to say that we've got one and to say that it's one who's got a very good track record, a recent history of winning, and he hopefully can bring sort of that ethos and, and understand that some of these players aren't good enough and he can start bringing in a few players that, that understand how, how to win and, and will set a framework for us to, to, to build on. Yeah. Thank you for that. That's, that's some good points there. Mr. K, same thing for you. What will Fabio um, bring? Guys, I, I think, Paratici. I think what he'll bring first of all. <laughs> I like that. I, like that. I, I, I think the first thing he'll bring is he'll bring a chuckle and a laugh to everyone in the fan base because his appointment really represents Hitchin on the way out. Um, this whole thing with Levy and choosing players, basically the director of football was Hitchin's role. He was a shadow director of football when Poch was in his final year. He then assumed the technical we already had a technical director, but then he was let go. His duties, along with the director of football duties, were put together to make something called the technical performance director mm. or something like that, which is what Hitchens' title is currently. He also has a seat on the board, which now is going to become untenable. Because what's really happened is, is that the, the whole thing about the manager, 52 days, I think it is now, 51 days, guys? Mm, yeah, right? It's basically... You know, the, the idea here is that we want to get the club moving forward. We've got to get our infrastructure in place. So what Levy has done is he's listened to the rumor mill, I suppose, in a way, found out that maybe his position is under attack in terms of leadership. And on the side, he's pulled in Paratishi without Hitchin's knowledge. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right now, when he brought him in, it was total surprise to Hitchin because Hitchin's job was to identify managers that Levy could then, you know, bring into the club. What Levy did was he threw that script into the dustbin the moment Conte came into the picture. Okay, and this is where the Paratici bit comes in at the same time. So the reason why nobody heard of this before was because, let's face it, Alistair Gold is, is a wonderful person, lets us know about a lot of things going on in the club, and I wonder who his inside man knowledge is. You know, it seems to be pretty evident now that he's hitching. <laughs> so... That's what I think. I think on the second, the flip side, Paratici, if he's finally confirmed and done and sealed, delivered, then I think we've got ourselves an absolute gem on our hands because what he represents in terms of mentalities, he goes into a club and he says, right, okay, club, what do you need from players to make you win something? Mm -hmm. And then he gets the players according to that. I mean, you know, there's plenty of players out there that can be available for free, but he gets the ones that that team needs. There's very few times when he's got a player which wasn't needed. Okay? So yeah. I think that's what he's going to bring to Spurs in terms of players. And I think because of that, he's technically doing a better... He's going to do a better job than Hitchin. So what's Hitchin's job? Nothing. He can hang around the cafeteria now talking to Winks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, Sid, get your thoughts. What, what will Paratici bring? You know what? I think we've needed a technical director. I think it's been proven for the last couple of seasons uh, with the transfers, the dealings, youngsters coming in, getting progressed and that. This guy, Paratici, apparently he's the best Italian sporting director of the last 10 years. Yeah. Now, to be at Juventus for over 10 years and to be... Mm. Everybody else is calling him the best technical director with what he's brought in, like uh, Mike and Darius have been saying, the players that he's brought in. This guy is obviously he's got a record. He's proven. He, he knows who to bring in, when to bring him in, who to develop, um, get rid of the dead wood, which we've got a hell of a lot of. Hmm. Um, if if he's given the rein to pick the players that he wants, he goes and gets them. And if Daniel Levy just sits on his fat, fat ass and just lets him do what he wants to do, yeah, and get the players that 
no need for that. See? Oh. Yeah, but it's true. <laughs> um, what Tottenham Football Club need, Go yeah, on, Sid. get them players in. Um, I think we'll do well. This this is a guy. I, I think I read it somewhere yesterday. He gets angry, right, when he fails to land the signing of a fifteen-year-olds that he knows are good players. And apparently it's been known that he's got very, very angry when he's not got these players signed at 15 years old. So that just proves he's not only looking at the freebies, mm. the older players, mid-20s. He's also looking at youth players that he knows in some days are going to be uh, quality. Kinsey Which, Coleman, Coleman's the main example. Yeah, yeah, he is, isn't it? And, he's yeah. the, uh, and, and that ticks all Levy's boxes, let's be honest. Yeah. Um, so, in every sense of the word, it t- and you can see why Levy's gone for him. It, it does tick. Yeah. It, it ticks the boxes, doesn't it? But he's got to let him do get on with his job. He's got to get him. Yeah. You know, Levy's got to stand aside now and say, right, I've got you in now to appease the fans to make them happy. You just go and do what you've got to do. You go and get me the players that's going to make Tottenham great again. So, from my perspective, yeah. okay. So I've all, I've asked you all what your thoughts are on this opening gambit of what will Paratici bring. Um, they need to establish what his responsibilities are, what his role is. Because in my opinion, the director of football, if he's coming in, I want him to bring a philosophy. I want him to bring us a way in which we're going to play. That's not going to just be manager to manager. It's a philosophy. It's a vision, how the club wants to progress, how they want to play, what style of football, attacking, da 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 They don't really put something together in that, that last, and we talked about it before, in the programme on the last day of the season, to say he wants... Young players brought through. He wants the 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 old style of football. Sorry, the the, the Tottenham way as such. What is that Tottenham way? So I want to I want to have more details about the philosophy. How is he going to play? Is he going to be playing into a, a certain formation? Is it a four three? Is it based around you know what is how they're going to develop all of that? Because then the next stage after that is the manager. At the moment, everybody's talking about he's going to bring the next manager in, but if there's nothing behind that in terms of philosophy. This is why we're just getting linked to people like Antonio Conte. Oh, he's a great manager. Bring him in. Joseph, oh, he's a good manager. Ah, oh, Scott Parker, he's, a, he's all right, man. Do you know what I mean? There's no there's no tangible evidence to just suggest to me there is a plan of philosophy. That's going to be the key for this for me. If I don't think don't you're going to get that, that with Paris, you? I honestly you don't think, think you'll get that. Do you not think that with whoever we, whoever we land as a manager, Sam... Do you not think that will some, in some ways sort of dictate the type of philosophy of football that we will see going forward? Because, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. well, I mean, if he, Italian... If he so, if he, so, with the manager that we bring in now, mm-hmm. do you not think that will dictate the style or the, the philosophy of football that Paratici foresees Spurs going forward? Because most uh, Italians, let's be honest, they're they're quite tactical managers, aren't they? Most mm. of them will play some uh, sort of defensive, counter-attacking type football. That's the that's the Italian philosophy uh, in general, isn't it? So yeah. it's very defensive-minded. It's very much you know we'll play from a solid base, and then we will, as you said, counter-attack. Right? Okay, that's fine. But then, if you're going to be the one, because he, apparently he's been brought in to help identify the manager. If they mm. don't get let's say Conte in, because that's his favourite, it's his mate, and he brings someone like, let's say Graham Potter, for instance. Graham Potter lasts two years. What are they they looking at? Are they looking at something else along the same sort of lines? Because the players that he would have brought in should be adopted to suit the style of the manager. This is what I'm saying. If it goes back to the philosophy, sorry, Darius, what it goes back to for me is the philosophy. This is how we want to play. This is how the club vision looks. We're going to bring in the manager to suit that. Not just a manager who's going to come in and appease the fans. Have your plan. I, I'm, I'm very clear on how I see football. And if you mm. don't have that, you're just mm. going to be doing what we're doing at the moment. Bouncing from manager to manager. If you're going to do something like this, and it's really been pushed on him to get this director of football, make sure you get all the roles and responsibilities right for this director of football, in my opinion. Well, this is, this is my point. And this is why I said that for me he's not the best option that we could have chosen when you if you if that's what you're looking for Sam and you're looking for somebody to bring in sort of continuity within the way we play football and it, that and I get what you mean because then that allows you to make transfers a little bit more long term a little bit more long distance you could buy a 16 17 year old 
who's going to potentially be playing very similar football for the time that he's at the club. Parry it doesn't teacher, just have to, it doesn't just have to be youngsters. It doesn't have oh, to no, be that's what I mean. I understand. It's players yeah. to fit the philosophy. And that's the thing. I don't think Paratici necessarily has a philosophy of football. I think his skill is in recruitment and, and finding the players as mm. opposed to sort of making that team or, do you know what I mean? He's, I, I did a bit of research on him. He doesn't really have a very, very big footballing history. And, and like somebody like, a, I'll use Ralph Rangnick as an example. He has a, a style that he wants to deploy and that he yeah. will hire managers according to that style. If we're, and we'll look at the, uh, the overlay that we've got. If you actually look at what Paratici says, he sort of accommodates to managers. So when Conte was at okay. Juventus, he accommodated to Conte. And then when Allegri came in, he accommodated to Allegri. So Which it's sort brilliant. of, that's the model that, that Tottenham are in the moment. And so, I, I don't agree with that model, but that's the model that Tottenham so are sort of going for. In terms of that then, his role and responsibility is limited because I see a director of football who comes in and brings all that. If it was someone like Ralph Rangnick, that's what he's going to bring. This is our way of playing. This is what we want to do. And we fit everything towards that in a puzzle. And he tells Daniel Levy this. If he's just coming in to be the best person to get players in, then that's going to be completely different if we get Conte, which will be completely different if we get exactly. Ten Hag, which will be completely different if you get Graham Potter. And that that's why he's not made any signings or sold any players. And that, that to 100%. me, is the exact reason. Because so if, we, if we knew the Deadwood, we would have sold players. But I think that we are really depending on what this manager wants to do. And that's not exactly. a good thing. But, yeah. Yeah. I, I, it, I think with Paratici, we're looking at, again, I, I do think it's another mini project in, in what he will want to do with Spurs, i.e. if he's going to come in and the rumours are um, that he wants to, or he is getting rid of some Deadwood or looking to get rid of Deadwood, then, I mean, that's not going to be over over one transfer window or two transfer windows. You're going to be looking at three or four transfer windows over the course of what two seasons two or three seasons so I, I think i think with paratici coming in i think we're looking at we are looking at a sort of mini rebuild of to some to some extent before i bring up the um stats i just want to ask the next question i'll, I'll start with you mr k firstly uh all right then so we've kind of said what would paratici be what should what should be his first thing that he does is it the manager is it looking at the players? Because obviously the manager situation, I've kind of read that it's a, a combination of him, Dan Levy. I, I would like Daniel Levy to really take a step back from mm. all footballing matters and let this guy deal with that. But if the guy's not able to deal with all aspects of being a director of football, is he necessarily going to be the right appointment? So what would be, Mr. K, his priority, the first thing you should get done when he comes well, in? Well, I think, I, think, <laughs> I think there's a, there's a good to to solid chance that he is coming in but let's just pretend he is and he's already arrived um i think as a professional when he looks at an outfit oh we've lost, lost you mr k oh unfortunately let's go to darius then same thing to you what should be his priority the first oh he's back he's back go on then we lost you for a minute we've lost him again we've lost him again Mr. K, Sorry, yeah. guys, I do beg your pardon. That was me. That was me. Uh, yeah, my Wi Fi router went off there. But um, what, I was, <laughs> what I was just saying just before I disappeared for a little while was um, that th when he looks at our squad, if, if you imagine that, for example, there's going to be a manager that's going to come in, one of the things that Paratici is going to do is going to look at the type of squad that we've got and then he's going to look at the philosophy of what Levy has said at the beginning or, uh, when, the, when the summer just started for us of the mission statement of what type of club we are in terms of attacking possession bringing up the youth and i think paratici right yeah is really going to come in here he's going to look at the squad and say okay what areas are deficient right okay the defense is disjointed right i need to start looking around for defenders i need to start making a list of ex extremely you know experienced defenders to up and coming defenders right then he's going to look at the middle of the midfield right yeah and say to himself right hoiberg is there right i've got people like sissoko i've got people like winks you know um, Winks looks like a prospect to get rid of because he's not up to it. You know, he's heard it all the way in Italy that he's, you know, that there's a guy called Winks who scored a goal against Barcelona and has been passing it sideways ever since. Um, so I think he's going to say, OK, right, fair enough. I need to replace these guys in midfield. What can I get? Can I get something very experienced or should I get something that's up and coming? I think he will. his job is to do both. Is to get something that's, that can go in there, slot in there, that can be available and for, for the right price that Levy would uh, agree to. But the only problem I've got with his position is everything he does, he more or less has to get Levy to approve it. That's not exactly the full power that you should have as a, as a director of football. You're this meant to decide okay, who's the 
the manager has yes. got to be. You've got to decide what type of uh, how to implement the philosophy in terms of what players to get. Uh, you agree. know, and and you know, the coaching staff to, to supplement. You know, uh, the first the team. Title, the, the actual title of his job, director of football, that suggests to me you're a director. So that's your directing. You're directing that aspect of it. Daniel Levy could be looked at director of commercial aspects. That side of things he can go and deal with. So this is where I want to see what the relationship is between the two of them. Um, but again, I'll, I'll, sorry, I'll come to Darius in terms of, apart from obviously the manager, which we know is going to be the priority, what should be the next priority? Uh, it's probably, it has to be players. For me, it has to be outgoings over ingoings for me. I had, there's too many players in that squad, in that team, that just I don't want to see ever play for Tottenham again. And that might be harsh, and I know some people might have sort of affinities towards those players, but in my opinion, there's a lot of those players on that team that shouldn't be playing for Tottenham. And I don't think you need a manager to be able to determine that. For example, Sissoko, for example, Dyer. I don't think you need a manager in to sort of determine that those players shouldn't be at the club anymore. And for me, if you're not going to make any signings and do anything until the manager comes, I think you can realise that people like Aurea, who's got a year left on their contract, who are literally going out of their way to say they want to leave. I think you can start to sort of, you know what I mean, ease those players out and see what sort of kitty you can sort of develop before that manager even comes in. And then the manager's got even more of an idea of what he's going to be able to use, what Paratici is going to be able to use to sort of get these players in that they want. So outgoings, it's outgoings over ingoings for me. I, I don't really want to see many players come in until certain players leave. And that also will determine the the quality of players we can buy to replace them. Because if we can sell four or five players, then we can bring in maybe better quality players as opposed to bringing in three players and then selling five players afterwards. So, yeah, outgoings over ingoings for me. Sid, is it, is it players out before players in for you? I think I agree with Darius. Um, I don't think he's, Paratici is that stupid. I think he knows when he's, got, when he's been told you've got the job, he's probably looked at that squad and he's probably thought, Right, this is, was the same squad that got to the Champions League final with Poch mm. and then they um, they slung him out to dry the following season. It's the same bunch of players that Mourinho had and this is Jose Mourinho who's won several, several trophies everywhere he's been. If he couldn't get anything out of these players, then he surely got to think, well, hold on, now I'm going in, I'm brand new to the club, I'm gonna, I need to get rid of what Darius is saying, the likes of Dyers, the Winxes, Aurier wants to leave, let him go. Whoever wants to leave, let him go. And yes. yeah, you've got to because he he needs to come in and just come in guns firing and say, right, you know what? It's not worked with two managers before. Sorry, you guys are not good enough. I now need to start afresh and boom, boom, boom. Go for it. Mm. Right. So again, this is a comment here from Spurs Zone TV. Thank you, Spurs Zone TV, for watching. It's a very good point here. Uh, yes, boys. Paratici gave Aaron Ramsey 400k a week for us. Now, We've all, and we're going to come to the graphic in a minute. We're lauding him about all the players that he brings in, saying, Run, wonderful, brilliant, great. But some of the players that he's brought in, I'm pretty sure they're going to be on some hefty wages. One of them being Aaron Ramsey, that was brought in to Juventus from Arsenal. I know he was on a free, so that probably compensates. But yeah. I don't know if we're going to be ever, apart from obviously this Gareth Bell thing that we had, we're, we're, we're certainly not going to be paying 400k a week to any player. So, is that mean his role of bringing in these so-called great players is going to be diminished for the fact that he may be hamstrung in terms of the amount of money that he can spend? I just sorry to interrupt before people speak. I just want to say I do think that Aaron Ramsey is only on 187k a week. I think that 400k was like a bit yeah. of a, I was a fake say, story. I think that he's under yeah, I, think, I, think I don't think it is 400. Yeah, I don't think yeah. it is either. I think it's everything, all his bonuses and all. The um, extra money that he got when he signed and everything mm. like that, it all amounted to 400, but it's not mm. 400 wages now. No. I agree. But regardless, there's still, like I said, there still are signings that you do have to, and I think yeah. it's the, like, the out, like I said, we were talking about the outgoings. Paratici sort of, he's got a bit of a reluctance to, to, to sell players, but I don't know if that's because of Paratici's ineligibility to sell players or if it's because that, like I said, for example, if you give somebody like Aaron Ramsey 200 grand a week, it's very hard to make somebody move off 200 grand a week if you pay mm. these players upwards of 200 300 grand a week and they're in their 30s and you're they've signed for freeze they don't really have any reason to leave so i don't know if that is obviously i it might be paratici offering these wages and stuff but i don't know if it's if it's paratici necessarily not being able to sell the players or the players just kind of digging their heels in and and saying i'm but not going to go anywhere. this is what well, paratici needs to first and foremost probably 
work out what exactly is his remit within this director of football role, isn't it? I mean, it's all very well. Yeah, I've agreed to take the role, but it's like with any job. Once you once you're actually in the job and you get down to the nitty gritty of what your what your remit is within that role, I think that then sort of will dictate as to how he can go about being successful in the job. So if he knows what he's got i mean first of all he's got to work he's got to speak to to, to levy and work out what mm. his budget is has he got a budget to go out and buy players has he got to sell players before he can before he can buy has he got a wage structure that he's got to to work towards that will then dictate as to right okay i know i've got x amount of money to spend and i know i've got x amount of money to, to spend on wages that will then dictate what he needs to do, i.e., moving players out and bringing players in. I think once he's once he knows that, that once he's got that or understanding of what he's working with, um, then like Darius says, I think the the obvious is then to get out the dead wood. That I mean, every Tottenham fan will probably agree with the fact that the first and foremost uh, sort of job for him will be to get rid of the dead wood. Uh, move on players that have some sort of value that we can that we can make money from and uh, hopefully that will then as I said uh, I think everyone's mentioned it here that will, that will then uh, sort of hopefully have a or give us a, a a kit a transfer kitty to to work with to bring in the players that will that will bring us um, the quality that we want to see playing for Tottenham and push us up the, uh, back up to among the the elite clubs etc certainly easier said than done moving players out certainly mm -hmm. easier to get players in than it is to get players out as we know once you sign on a big contract it's pretty much down to the player then as to whether or not you want to move them on the powers goes unless you pay him off unless you pay him off yeah exactly so the club has the power if they want to keep a player as we've got in the harry kane situation we could play hardball and keep him but then again if we had paid harry kane let's say 600 grand a week and he then falls off a cliff in terms of performances, it's going to be damn difficult to get him out of the club yeah, when you're on that sort of money, i.e. Gareth Bale at Real Madrid. So there is very much a balance in this. It's a real balance in that. Let's just bring up um, some of the uh, highlights. I guess you can call them highlights. Uh, Paratici. And I'll just take off this banner going down the bottom so we can just see everything. Uh, so his roles, he's had sporting director, chief football officer, managing director. I think he worked at Sampdoria as well. Uh, but the majority of the time has been spent at Juventus. Uh, so his accolades there, nine Sierra champions, four times Italian, Italian Cup, four times Italian Super Cup. Key transfers. One of the big ones that's not left, that's been left out of here is obviously Cristiano Ronaldo. I think that was 2018 or 2019, somewhere like that. Yeah. Um, there's, there's a number of players on this list, very, very good players we can see. Uh, Cancelo, 36 mil from Valencia. Kingsley Coman from Free, excellent deal. Paul Pogba getting in from Man United is a a 19-year-old, Paolo Dybala. So there's some, some real top, top quality players there. But I don't know how much he had to pay to get some of these players in. It's all one of them good coming as free. But what I'm saying about, and you've touched on it before, Mike, we need to establish what our budget is, how much we're looking to spend, what type of, you know, lengths of contract are we now going for? If you're going to be getting someone who's in their, what, early 30s, are we going to do like what Arsenal did with Willian and give someone like that a, a two to three year contract? Or do we have a specific transfer policy that suggests that we only go for players up to a certain... All these sort of things, which is not clear, and I don't know if they ever will become clear, I, I think... But that's what the DOF's there for. That's, a, that's sort of down to the DOF. It's, sort of that, it's part in part the DOF and the chairman. For me... Tottenham have never been a team that sort of identified targets, sort of like your cities and Chelsea's, where they will have a specific... And Liverpool as well, because these clubs are so, starting to use data a lot more. So they, they sort of identify one specific target and they'll pursue that target. So, for example, Van Dijk at Liverpool, Haaland currently now, Chelsea are really seeming to pursue Haaland. It's that individual. Tottenham, however, don't... We never really seem to have a, an individual that we, we've been pursuing and we never really seem to do it 100%. It seems like it is determined by the managers that come in. So again, the outgoings is cool. We can say that we need all these outgoings, but at the end of the day, it, nothing's going to happen. I can clearly see now nothing's going to happen until we get a manager in. So it, it, it's hard It's hard to kind of make, to, to discuss anything because I don't think the guys upstairs, I don't even think Paratici knows fully exactly what he's going to be told to look for yet because 
I think it really is down to the manager. And that's not the right way we should really, really be uh, approaching this because at the end yeah. of the day, if, if Conte came in and we made a couple of signings and then Conte left a year later, you're going to be stuck with Conte players and then he's going to go and have to 100%. sign. It's just going to make the squad even more messed up as it is. That's where you hope the director of football and the manager uh, will, will click and work together. If they work together, then you stand a good chance of being successful. If, if Paratici has ideas or uh, sort of in a different direction to the manager then mm. everything gets fragmented and uh, hence, I mean, hence why i said i didn't really see paratici coming in before the conte rumors started because they're mates they they won three series together so i i don't know if it's the i don't know if it's a case of paratici signed and conte didn't and now he's kind of in a situation where it's awkward obviously a, a grown man like that can can obviously say no to it to a deal but I, I just don't know really and truly why why we signed him all of a sudden now and I, yeah. he's gonna do good it's just it just seems weird it still seems weird to me i think but, there was a lot of pressure sorry sir. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna come because i want to ask you the question this next that i've got on my list anyway um i think it was probably the combination i think there's a lot of fan pressure obviously they're not oblivious to that they will know that there's a lot of going on they know that the fan base isn't happy about certain things wow. so they will a lot of people have been calling out for this director of football, looking at some of the the, the the contracts or sorry, the transfers that's been happening with Steve Hitchie. So a lot of people within Spurs know that a director of football is needed. So I think it was probably on the radar anyway. Now, there has been talks that they've been looking at Paratici for some while, not just before Conte. However, you're right in what you're saying, Darius. That sort of combination seemed to be a match made in heaven. Conte coming in, Paratici's best mate, works well at Juventus. This could be something that's going to be good going forward for Tottenham. Conte's yeah. now out of the frame at the moment. Paratici's still here. Ooh, what does that mean? I think the director of football is the person that has to make the decision about the manager, not the other way around. You know what I mean? So the, the, yeah. the manager is brought in by this director of football, but the director of football also has to have a clear identity of what it is the club wants so he can go and get that. And then we bring in the players alongside that. So my I question is... you'll see Sarri links, by the way. I guarantee you'll start seeing Sarri links and Italian managers being linked now. Oh, 100%. And players. Oh, yeah, yeah, and players. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sid, I'll come to you. This is what I want to ask. How do you think Daniel Levy and Paratici are going to work? How is that relationship going to work? <laughs> that's a very good question. question for you, Sid. I'm, I'm interested well, to hear what you say. No pressure. This, this, do you know what? It's... Katy Perry song, isn't it? Hot and cold. It's going to be hot and cold, isn't it? Because per uh, Paratici is going to go in there and he's going to tell him, don't forget, guys, the transfer window opens tomorrow. So now we need to have a strategy in place where we need to look for players um, that the manager is going to approve of and Paratici. So he has to, they're going to have to sit down and come to some agreement. Uh, Paratici has to say to him, right, listen, I know I've heard all about you. I've heard all the dealings that you've done, this, that, the other. If you want me to come to you, then this is how it's going to work. I'm going to tell you this is the players that I want. This is who I want to go for. You're going to have to give me the money to go and get these players. If you're not going to give me the money, then I'm not signing. Yeah. Further down the line, don't promise, don't make promises to begin with. And then further down the line, you then start backtracking and saying, well, I ain't got the money. I can't do this. I can't do that. No, he has to rubber stamp it and say, "From you, I've signed a four-year contract. For them four years, I want, I need, you will give me who I ask for. Do not then stop backtracking and telling me, sorry, mate, I ain't got no money for this. I ain't got no money for that. No. Yeah, you, you've hit the money. You, know on, you hit the nail on the head there, mate. Yeah. Um, I'm coming in. You want me, regardless of whether Conte was coming or not. Yeah. I've now come to you. Yeah. This is my demands. Don't mess me up on it. I'm telling you now straight. That's how it should be. And Sid, mm -hmm. if he does mess him up, I want, I personally, I would like to see Paratici verbally and audibly go out of his way and say, I'm yeah. trying to do this and Levy's yeah. stopping me. Because I do exactly. believe, and this is my, again, I might be a hopeful Spurs fan saying this, but I do believe if Levy gives up a lot, almost all of this power in terms of control, because I want to, I, I don't know, Mr. K, I know you know quite a lot of the insides, but I don't know who was the person who was speaking to the agents, the families of the players and, and discussing the ins and outs of the deal. I think that was Hitchin doing that, was it? It obviously wasn't Levy doing that, was it? So I think Paratici can also have much a much more influential say in, in speaking to the players and, and trying to convince them of the of the project. I think he'll be, a, I think he'll have a much better job of doing that than Hitchin. Yeah. So I think that if Levy really was to give up a lot of that power and let Paratici do his thing like he says it, I really do believe that it, it could work, but 
again, I, I, I'm in no position to to trust that's going to happen. We've so. been there, we've been there, done it, heard it all, seen it all. Exactly, so, exactly. you know, yeah. definitely. Mr. Yeah. Kay, I want to get your thoughts because I think you're very vocal with regards to Levy, as you should be, because it's everybody's yeah. opinions on this. What do you, how, how do you see that, that relationship working between the two? Well, I, I think it's, I think it's pretty much straightforward. Um, you've got you've got yourself a, a classical director of football because that's what he is. You know, he's got all the earrings and trappings of it. He's Italian as well. Um, he's, he's just come from Juventus. You know, that's brilliant. He's got everything that you need to step in so that the fan base can turn around and say that you know what, uh, that Levy is starting to relinquish his total control over the footballing side. But the problem is this: is that Unlike most chairmen, unlike most football clubs, the chairman that we've got is too hands-on. Mm. Paratici has, is coming in and he's going to look at the chairman and say, this guy is God. Because when every club he goes to, that's what the chairman is to him. Mm. right? Now he's going to come here, he's going to do the same thing which Hitchin's done, which is going to make a list of players, put them in front of Levy. He's going to make a list of managers, put them in front of Levy. Now, Levy... For, 20, for 15 years solid, I don't know about the first five, but for 15 years solid, he has this little trait of saying, well, okay, you give me a list, and if I want to, I can pull my own rabbit out of my own hat if I need to, right? Conte was one, right? Yeah. Paratici was yeah. another. And probably if you go back in the past, you'll find others as well, where all of a sudden, Levy's pulled some player or something out of the hat that no one was expecting, and then bang. You know, I think Jose Mourinho might have been one of those situations too, where oh, he pulled yeah. it out of the bag. Oh, yeah. Mourinho, 100%. Yeah, yeah he so, it. So yeah, we can have it. we can have a we can have a technical performance director whose job it is to do that. But Levy just went round him, and he's done it again and again and again. Now that's a habit to me. That's a way of operating. How, uh, how is Levy going to uh, change that? I, 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 I can't I, disagree. I, I, I can't disagree. <laughs> I, I, what I will say to those, there's, there, and again, we always have to just temper what we hit. There's a lot of press comes out and a lot of things get said. Now, I know we're never, ever going to know 100% of the truth. Usually when a lot of people start reporting it, we kind of buy into it that it must be that way inclined. I, I, I think you're right in what you're saying. I think, and it's been proven, Danny Levy has been involved too much in the football inside yeah. of things. Um, but does that mean now he's going to say hold on a minute, I don't want to do anything more of this, I'm going to concentrate. I don't think that's going to be the case. But it is now how that relationship works. Because if you come in this role, director of football, I keep mentioning it, director of football, you're directing football. The commercial side, you get on with it. Let me get... As Darius has mentioned, it is. has this been something that Paratici's taken on board at Juventus? Or was he also kind of in line with the chairman? Did they have a relationship that was such that it was joint decisions? I, I don't know all this. So well, I, it's, it's quite funny quite you say sure. that. I mean, and they, this bit, well, the CEO of Juventus was Beppe Marotta and a lot of Juventus fans don't give the credit to Paratici for a lot of the signings and, and success that Juventus had in, in obviously the decade that we've just been in. And they say that it's Beppe Marotta that, that, that's the reason and a lot of the signings and scouting that came through him. In terms of Paratici being able to work with the chairman. I know that Andrea Agnelli was a chairman. He said that Agnelli was hands-on as well. And Agnelli had a lot to do. He was very involved in the Cristiano signing, for example. And he he was the one who was sort of trying to tell Agnelli that this is the reason why we should sign him. And this is the positives and negatives. But Agnelli kind of trusted him. So he allowed him to kind of pursue that signing. Trust. That's the, That's word. the That's issue. The word. That's the issue that I have. Word. I don't believe, trust. and I know that Mr. K can 100% say this, I don't believe Levy's going to trust anybody. And like you said, that's a habit thing. I don't think he's going to be able to trust anybody that comes in the door unless it was somebody like Pep Guardiola. Do you know what I mean? I, I just, even if like even if um, Paratici was to give, like um, Mr. K said, if he was to give him a list of players and managers in the order and said, this is the best one, this is second best, this is third best. I, I still think that Levy would probably go on his own tangent and think, oh, maybe I could do this, maybe I could do that. Yeah. I, I think that's the issue. And Paratici... He, he will not succeed. Work. He will not succeed if that happens. No. So if he, a lot of responsibility is on is on Levy. A lot. If, Le More, if, Levy, if Levy doesn't leave Paratici alone to do the football side of things, it, it, there's just no point in him being. There's no point in being employed. It yeah. just won't work. It's just it's game over before it's even started. So Levy, if he wants this director of football to, um, if he wants this director of football uh, to to work, and he wants Paratici to be successful. Then he has to 
He has to leave him alone and let him leave him, give him the reins to, on the football side. Just let him know what he's got to work with, budgets, etc. Albeit it's Levy, so the budget's Mike. probably not going to be that high. But yeah, Mr. K. Mike, I was going to. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt, but That's right. um, the, the the point comes across is that what Levy has in fact done when he's taken bringing Pedrotici in is that he's buying intellectual property, right? Because Paratici, he when he comes in, he brings a network of mm -hmm. the, the yep. main thing that, that you've got to do as director of football is know how to shake agents' hands. Yeah, you got to know agent, right? Yep. Now agents got right that. now, what do they think? What do they think about Levy right now? All the agents in the world—they despise right him. Now. They all despise yeah. him. Chairmans as well. They all despise him. Yeah. So Paratici is going to be his point man, negotiating man that he's going to buffer himself with, right? But at the end of the day, behind the scenes, Levy is the one that actually calls the shots, right? And this mm -hmm. this type of behavior that that Levy's got is gonna it, it, when Paratici goes goes about his you know way of doing something. There's a certain finesse that you need when you're dealing with agents, especially when you're dealing, talking about millions and millions and millions of euros, right? This is a yep. lot of money we're dealing yep. with here. We're talking top clubs here. We're now the eighth richest on the planet. We went from tenth to eighth in a matter of a year. Okay, so. What we got here but with Paratici is that, that he's a protection for Levy, yeah. but that interference from Levy will come at crucial moments of negotiation. Because sometimes when you negotiate, the a rhythm and a stamp, boom. But he's going to interfere with that and make negotiations last longer, maybe by 10%. And that's longer where than I was saying that's going to have a knock on effect in the future between him and Paratici. Yeah. That trust and is going to erode. And, that's, and that's what I was saying, Mr. K. He, he has to leave. He has to leave. Uh, Paratici, Paratici alone to, to do the negotiating. He has to let him, yeah. he, just, he has to just leave him to it. Otherwise, this will never work. There's no point in being employed. If if Levy's going to continue to interfere at crucial moments, th th there's Levy's just no point in being employed. No, yeah, business, which, he's got not business mind, he's got a money mind, which basically turns around to, to Paratici and say, listen, what about if we finance it like this? And we make so this it, figure this you, look at, you look at Paratici's... And Paratici's uh, come back and gone, I've just negotiated for two weeks to get this deal on the table and you're telling me to like try another way to finance but, it? But, but if you look at Paratici's record really on, on the happening. signings, he's not done too bad. He, he, he's obviously got an eye for a bargain because, I mean, he brought in, what was it, Perlo on a free? He's brought in yeah. uh, uh, Tevez free. for 8 million. Yeah. Kingsley um, Coleman, Vidal for nine million, Vidal Kier. for nine million. So he, he has got an eye for a, he has got an eye, a very good eye for a bargain, and he obviously knows yeah. how to negotiate to, to 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 an effect that is beneficial for him, stroke the club. So Levy should be able to. Oh, again, I say should. I, I'm using this in a loose <laughs> term here because it's Levy, <laughs> isn't it? But he should I'm have the trust to leave him to yeah, do the right. negotiating because he's got a he's got a record to say. Well, if you leave me to it, this is my record here of the players that I've brought in. Leave me to it, and direction. you'll be in safe hands. He's going to need clear like, indications. Like, it's like saying, you. it's like saying to him, saying to saying to to Paratici, right? You've got hundred grand to spend on a house. Paratici, you could go out. I found you a house. It's hundred grand. Oh, where is it? Well, you can't find that house in Windsor for hundred grand. You might have to find it somewhere else. All right, I found it now. Oh. How many bedrooms has it got? Do you know what I'm saying? It <laughs> yeah. all goes down. There's so many questions that need to be asked before you can get something of value, which yeah, but... makes it go back to the philosophy. What are you bringing the players in to do? What is it you're bringing them into? You can't just say, I want to go out and get Dybala. What, why do you need Dybala? Is he gonna, are we playing with a number 10? What's your philosophy? Are we going to be playing long ball? What, you know, all these questions is what then dictates what players you bring in. And I'm not, I, I'm, I'm not satisfied with that aspect of it. I want well, funda you, I, fundamentally, it's, it's not going to be a the best. Or that's not the ideal signing for you, then, Sam, because Paratici's so, never yeah. been a man about philosophy. He's always so been this, about getting the signings in. This is what I've got down as technical aspects of that role: scouting, finding players, selling, moving players on, contracts, agent dealings. Do you know what I mean? Those aspects there are the fundamentals of a director of football for me. And if he's not doing that solely on his accountability, then it's not going to work. This is why I think Hitchin will probably still stay because I think the director of football, Paratici, will dictate as to, right, this is the criteria of players that I want us to go out and scout. Hitchin, that will be you or down to you and your team to go out and find these players with this set criteria that I want to bring into Tottenham. Go out Dream. and go out and find it because I can't Dream. see Hitchin. 
when you see the rumours about Hitchin being a, a popular figure around Tottenham, that to mm. me just spells the fact that he's not going anywhere. He's going to stay and he's going to probably move into that that scouting pure, but then purely ask the question, is that too, is many the, chefs, too many chefs in the too kitchen? Many, yeah. Now? Yeah, is that, of course, that's the question I'm asking now because now I'm saying you've got Paratici who's going to give you players, and then you've got Hitchin who's got, then got to go and negotiate and find the players. Then you've got Levy who's going to go and then do all the dealings. Uh, and... I don't think Hitchin will go out and negotiate for the players. I think he'll go okay. out. Just... I think yeah. Paratici will set the criteria of players that he wants set the, player the scouting profile. network to go out and find, and that's where okay. he'll then identify the targets, bring them back to the table for the director of football, for the manager to go yes, no, etc., and then. That'd be down to Paratici then to to negotiate with the agents, with the clubs to bring those okay. players in. If so, I will ask another works. question. Sorry, Mike. this is all hindsight, it. though. This is all perfect. It's all hindsight, world, mate. It's all I mean, hindsight. it's probably going to be Levy. He's going to bring a director <laughs> of football in, but Levy's probably going to control <laughs> everything still. So what's and the that's point? why I ask: Is it, is it just appeasement? We might have point Paxton Road to go out and be the the director I'd, of footballs I'd, and just. I'd definitely <laughs> love to. We touched on it earlier, though. But how do you think this relationship with? Paratici and Hitchens going to work? Is it a match made in heaven or one that's looking like it go down and down and down? How is it going to work with them two? Because I don't know at this moment in time whether or not Steve Hitchin is, because he got his role changed, it was Chief Scout, uh, blah, 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 whatever it is now. And as you were saying, Mike, he's quite a popular person. There's a lot of reports to suggest that people mm. were not happy with the way he was treated, with getting, you know, yeah. a clear philosophy in terms of the manager and then Danny be going out and doing what he did with the Conte side of things. But he has to then still be in a role, what is his role going to be under Paratici? What, what do you think that's going to be, Sid? Do you know what? I personally, right, I I don't know whether people are going to like it or not, but if Paratici comes in, Hitchin has to go because Hitch, he's taking over Hitchin's job. Hitchin's going to have a bit of an issue with that, right, number one. Secondly, if all these rumours are true about all the players and staff and everybody really liking Hitchin and they're not happy about it, then you're going to get that situation where if Paratici does something, then they and they don't players or whoever don't like it, they're going to go to Hitchin and then have a word with Hitchin and then say to Hitchin, you know what, go and have a word with Paratici. So we're going to have that like a piggy in the middle kind of thing where your mate, my mate, you go and have a word with him. We don't like him. <laughs> you know, let's stitch up Paratici because Hitchin being at the club is going to cause issues because you know, no matter what, it's going to cause issues. So them two... I, I think it's a three-way. It's, it's Daniel Levy, Paratici and Hitchin. It's going to be a three-way battle. Mm. And it's it's not going to work. All three of them, it's not going to work. I think Hitchin mm. would have to leave the club because... I, I tend no, to agree. With I agree. You, right? And no the thing is, and the thing is Sid, like, he's not proven that he's... And some people say, and there's not a theory, but some people are saying that Hitchin might be getting a little bit too much stick. It might be he's actually finding decent players, but Levy's not mm. actually wanted to commit to these players. I don't mm. know. From what it seems like, Hitchin's not done a great job. And yeah. me personally, I don't give a shit if the players like him or whatever. If you like him so much, then put him in the cafeteria and Absolutely. let him serve them food and they'll still be able to see him every day. I don't really yeah. care if you if you if you like. You've got to be good yeah. at your job. And you're not he's not proven to me that he's, he's done a good job. So, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Let him be the let him be the boot man to clean their boots. He'll still be able to say hello to them. At the end of the day, Paratici yeah. has proven himself that he can bring in players, he can change the team's trajectory, and he can run well not run a club, but he can from a football side, run the club. So I'm, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't really care if the, if the players are yeah. sad or the. Fa- the you're still going to need a, you're still going to need a scouting network, aren't you? The director yes, of football yes. is not going to. He can't be a director of football. He can't be in charge. Like he's, but he's his very remit obsessive. Can't be so, so broad. He's going to have to have a team that can go out and and identify or, or yeah. Identify I think he should have the final say. That mold. I think you're right, yeah. Mike. I think he should definitely have the final say. So if he sets the criteria, this is what I'm looking for. Prayer profile. He gives that to somebody. Let's say it's Hitchin. Goes out. Right, Mr. Uh, Paratici. This is the player I've got. This is his age. This is what I did. And I've got a little bit of YouTube. This is what he does. He should then have the final say. If he says yes, great. He takes that responsibility and accountability. If he says no, he does exactly the same. What I think's happened in the past is Daniel Levy is, has almost clouded that judgment as opposed to say, right, Who's to blame for this? So do we blame Steve Hitchin? Do we blame Daniel Levy because he didn't open the... If you've given someone that accountability, it's clear. Their role is this. Their decision was this. And then there's nobody can come and say, oh, wow, he's made that and it wasn't quite him. It's clear. You're accountable. You didn't do it right. You're off. That's how I look at it. And that's the thing with with Hitchin. If he doesn't like it, then ta-ra, goodbye. There's the door. Because you don't want to... 
because I'm sure Paratici will have from he'll have in his network as a director of football. He'll have he'll have uh, a team who can like someone that can look after the scouting network, someone that can help him with negotiating, like to like as in a middleman that brings the deals to Paratici and and the third party. So I don't think I mean if it's in. If Hitchin throws his toys out the out the pram, then then I don't see think. You later. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Go. Yeah, absolutely. Go. <laughs> see you later. Yeah. I don't think there probably be there won't be many Tottenham fans that would be sorry to say goodbye to him. I mean, no. You lot are harsh. You lot are harsh. Very harsh. Well, it's very harsh. Did I begin? Did I begin with this at the beginning? Did I begin with this at the beginning? I yeah. think yesterday. What happened yeah. yesterday? Right. Yeah. I came across an article on Twitter that said that uh, Levy had reached like a uh, he'd become a billionaire. Right, um, and and this happened in April, I think the report was, and and it really wound me up because I was having such a lovely day. It was nice and warm, <laughs> and so I decided. I thought, I thought, you know what? Since you peed me off right yeah, I'm going to tell you something that's going to happen. Hitchin, I didn't want to say this, but you're gone, bruv. You're gone, and I decided to tweet that yesterday. I said, that's it. The sacrificial lamb for Enoch out is going to be, is going to be Hitchin. Uh, and, and and this is this is and, basically Levy throwing someone under the bus or throwing them just saying, "Listen, it's all, all these issues though, that we have with football, manager, though, you know, all of these issues that we have with players. You know, haven't you been my right hand man when it comes to players? What's gone wrong, G? What's gone wrong? And and it's going to be like Hitchin. That's it. At two, you know, you're gone. But yeah, um, sure. guys, but I think no, yeah, no. I think yeah. It's it's um, sad. It's sad. Um, I mean, sad. But it's it, it Hitchin deserves it's every football, bit of it. Say, football. It, it, football is always it's always evolving, isn't it? A club will always evolve. To, uh, like players come and go, as we've seen over the years. Managers come and go over this over the years. Mm -hmm. the, the, there should be no different to to backroom staff. Like yeah. Hitchin, you've had your time. You've but, had your time. Mike, go. Mike, Mike. Go. This is the executive board level stuff, right? Yeah, the guys on the guys got a seat there. You know, mm. that, that's the thing. That's the issue. He's got a seat there, and Levy's done it behind everyone's back. He this comment here from, power from, right this now. Comment here from, from this, this comment here from Peter Rainey: zero scenarios that works with Hitchin stays and Parachiti comes in. And I tend to lean towards what Sid's saying. I think he may have to go because I, I, I think he, he might be right. He might think his position's untenable anyway. Somebody else is coming in. Um, plus the fact that, as Darius mentioned earlier, it seems that Paratici does have this real drive this ambition to get that deal right and is almost you know single-minded in that so Very maybe obsessive. he needs to bring bring his own person in that he maybe trusts in terms of that so it might be that steve hitchin has to go i don't know whether or not he can get that relationship working from all i've seen i, I i'm not sure it will work to be honest but only time will tell the the last thing i want to come to and this is this is the last point so we can wrap the show up is and i'm going to ask all of you the same question is this move, Paratici, not director of football, but is this move for bringing Paratici in the best one for Spurs at this time? Since you can start with this one. I always give you them ones to start with. <laughs> Thank <Yeah>. you. Um, <laughs> with, what, with what's gone on with our managers, um, with what's out there, I think at this po probably moment in time, with his proven track record, I think personally, I think it's the best move or the right move with what's out there. Uh, like Gary said before, Ragnarok was an option, but forget that. Um, we've just got to deal with what we've got. And at this current moment, he's the best that we can get and we've got. So, yeah, you've just got to go with it. OK, Mr K, what's your thoughts? Is this move the right move for bringing in Paratici at this moment? Um, oh, he's off mute. Yes, here we go. I think, I think oh, Levy... Sorry. Yes, here we go. Thank you. Sorry, guys. Um, I, I, I don't think Levy has any moves left to do. He's that desperate. He needs to pull a, quite a few rabbits out of the hat. Forget at rabbits. He needs to pull some elephants out of the hat. Because <laughs> this season is unprecedented with the number of people that have been dissatisfied with Levy personally. Forget so much Enoch or anything like that. Just Levy the person in terms of the way he's conducted things right Yeah, This last thing that he's done, the way he's done it behind people's back, is, is absolutely is disgraceful. Honestly, dis disgraceful. Uh, I'm not surprised staff, staff members are upset about this. You know? But he's, you know, business as usual with Levy and Co. Yeah. Yeah, good points, good points. Darius, good move for Spurs to bring him in now. Um, again, I will... I think, Mr. K, I think what you said earlier on, it, it sort of sat with me and it's sort of... I can't really get out of my head. It, it seems like, to me, Levy's sort of 
severed a lot of relationships with with agents and and chairmans and dofs and, and other clubs and everybody knows him now to be the guy who's just a pain in the ass to deal with and i do believe that bringing in paratici to sort of maybe get further in negotiations or start negotiations and then levy comes and you know finishes off i think that's going to probably help him i think that a lot of people would rather speak to paratici than to levy and that might help Signings, you never know. Um, again, relationships with with agents. Mino Raiola, massive super agent. He holds so many players on his books. And if you've got a bad relationship with Mino Raiola, that eliminates 15 world-class players that you can potentially go for. So, yeah, I think that the reason that he's come in it is a good one. Yeah, I agree to answer your question. I do believe it's the right thing to do. I think that he fits the, the model that, or the, the sort of, his skill set is what Daniel Levy's looking for and will help with, it won't it won't make Daniel Levy yeah. think mm. it's not like Conte where he, he has to go out of his way to do you know what I mean to bring success. I think it yeah. fits with what Daniel Levy wants to do. It's just, yeah, it's whether he will be allowed to do his own thing and whether he will actually be given the reins to actually direct football, like he said, Sam. Because at the end of the day, that's his job description. He directs football, role. directs a football that's in the club. It. If he's not given full responsibility and trust to direct football in the club, then bro, you're not the director of football, you're just another side man. So yeah, it, 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 it's it's good, but again, is it just is it just appeasement to the fans, or is it actually a director of football coming in and changing things at Tottenham? And like Cody said in the comments, time will tell. We can we can theorize, yeah. we can we can give all these players and whatever, but time will tell. We'll have to wait and see. And it shouldn't be long either. We should have a manager, in my opinion, hopefully by next week, and then things should start <laughs> roll things should start rolling from then. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully we can actually see if this was the right thing for Spurs. But I, I will always keep my hope up. I'll always keep my hope up. Definitely got to keep the hope. Mr. Mr. K made a good point. He brings with him that, that intellectual property. You know, he's mm. got certain connections. He's got certain ways. He's got certain relationships. He's got certain ways of doing things. So hopefully he brings that across. And it may help with negotiations that Danny Levy may have in the past alienated certain chairmen, certain ages, etc., etc. Mike, final word from you. Is this a good thing for Spurs at this moment in time? Yeah, I I think it's a good thing. Um, well, technically, it's a good thing for Tottenham. <laughs> um, if, and that, like Darius mentioned, uh, if um, if he comes in and he's, and he's sort of given the reins to, to to be a true director of football, then, uh, as it, Darius mentioned, time will tell whether his appointment has been a good thing for Tottenham or whether it's been unsuccessful. Um, but, yeah, I, 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 I can only see the benefits of the director of football being in place. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's what we have all been crying out for um, as, a, as a fan base. Um, Levy's obviously appointed, or uh, well, we think he's appointed Paratici. We hope, um, we hope he's we appointed hope, Paratici. Well, yeah, we hope, we hope for a manager, but that hasn't happened yet. And uh, and so, uh, yeah, I, I, I can only, yeah, I, I'm going to keep my hope up, keep try and keep positive with this. Um, it, as I say, uh, it, it does cry out as a as a positive for Spurs, um, okay. but. Time, time will certainly tell, given uh, given who's the boss if, and who's controlling the, the purse strings of Spurs. So, yeah, we we'll just have to wait and see how this pans out. Um, time, time will yeah. definitely tell. At least this way, if let's, um, we will see if Daniel Levy does allow him to direct football. Then I guess we can then say it's that person. Yeah, we can say you're accountable. That's your reason. At the moment, it's like, well, is it this person? Is it? Is it? Well, then it's, oh, it's Daniel Levy. So we all do that. And that's fine because he should be accountable being the CEO, chairman, whatever you want to call him. Now, if he brings someone in as a, almost like a shield, and I think that's what he's probably done, he's brought this person, hopefully, to be in between him as that shield. You deal with all that aspect. You take all that flat and you get all the, the issues. But as well as that, he should also take the... Um, the good things that come with that, you know, he should be like, uh, if he brought these players in and we are successful, he should get all the plaudits for that. So I'm hoping that that's what does happen. The because the direction of football is definitely what's required. Yeah, yeah 100%. The thing well, is, if what there we is want... Set... Oh, sorry, Matt, go on. No, I was just going to say, what we want is just Levy just to, just to stay out of football, deal yeah. with the off-field deal with the off, the, off the field stuff, which he's, which he's good at. You can't argue that he's not good at off-the-field um, 
uh, ongoings that he that he's involved with. It's it's the football side of things that he just needs to leave it to the experts to to get on with it and and give them the give them the opportunity to make Spurs successful and and get on that that map to being amongst the uh, the elite clubs. But if 100%. like we've said, I think Levy's put himself in such a bad position because if we are if we do do well from this point onwards and we sort of are seeming to to make progressions and we are all going to put that down to Paratici. If yeah. we do terribly, if Paratici doesn't do a good job. I don't think it's going to be down to Paratici. I think it will be down to Levy. And regardless well, he of that, hired him. So that's, that's, that's what that's I'm saying. That, yeah. that's, that's the balance. You're going to have to accept that. If somebody hires you, you don't do a good good job. They say, oh, well, you're accountable. But that, he's still responsible for getting it right. So we can mm. say, yep, he made the, he's made a decision. And this is what I'm saying. If you make a decision, you stick by that decision. What happens from that is down to whatever happens. Paratici could yeah. come in, not like being in England. He might come in, don't like these players here, don't like the setup. But, just, you know what I mean? Yeah. And if he's that. unsuccessful, if he's unsuccessful, then it's that that's on his shoulders. He, he, you've been like, you've come in. I've given you the full reins. If that does happen, and I know yeah. we're being hopeful here, but you've, you've been given the full reins and you've been unsuccessful. So if you're unsuccessful in your job, you it, it, it's gone. I'll find someone else, and you can't argue with that. At least he's had that full reign of control, and he's had the opportunity to try and be successful. But let's say. <sighs> We all got have home. this scepticism He's, of no, Levy Paratici, just yeah. <laughs> interfering I just, with stuff. Aren't we? I just, Parati- I just, Parati- sorry, is sorry, stupid. Sid, before you, before oh. you go, I'm going to let you say that bit, but I just want to thank some of these viewers for watching some of these comments. Um, <laughs> Derek Hutchinson, Dazza, Road to Nowhere, Cody, Sergio, uh, Peter Rainey, Derek Hutchinson, oh, sorry, I said that one, Boy from the Lane, Kieran Gilbert, Grandpa Stevens, <laughs> all regular guests here, Paul Brown, thank you very much. Keep Keep on putting these comments and leave any questions in the comment section below as well. DP, yeah. you know, Spurs Zone, thank you all for watching. It, we couldn't do any of this stuff without you, so really thanks for that. Sorry, Sid, just what you wanted to say on the last point. Yeah, sorry, I was just going to say, uh, is not stupid, yeah? He, he's done his homework. Before he's taken this job on, he's done his homework on Daniel Levy. He's done his homework on how he interacts with other uh, managers and everything like that. So for him to take the job, yeah, He's probably sat there and he's probably thought about it for a couple of weeks and just thought, is this the right job? I know what Daniel Levy's like. I've heard of other chairmen, other agents. Everyone said he's, he's a shrewd businessman. He's a bit of a beep, 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 right? Um, so he he's not going to take this job lightly. He's actually sat down and thought about it, yeah? And I think he's made, for himself, he's probably looked at it and thought, right, this is the right move for me and hopefully it'll be the right move for us. Especially, can I, can especially at his age as well. Can I just go on, say Mr. something? Oh, Sam, go on. Oh, Sam. Thank, you. Thank you. Um, he might well have said that, but he may have had his arms and arms. But if Danny Levy says I'll add an extra 50 grand a week, you're certainly gonna take because if someone said I wasn't sure about yeah. my job, but then they said here's another 50 grand a week, oh, suddenly that job becomes a lot better. So it yeah, really re- depends. It really reputation, does depend though. On what... reputation the, the, doesn't matter yeah. if you're gonna get paid. Isn't He's 68 years of age, isn't he? So, in the grand scheme of things, he, he's at the he's probably at the end of his uh, oh, end of his he's, career. He's, he's, a young, he's, a, he's a young. He's a young. Is he? I thought he was like 68. I might nah, be wrong here. He looks no. 68. I think he's. he's no, he's not even 51. He's 48. What am I talking about? He's 48. He'll be 49 he's in July. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's 48. Yeah, For some reason, I thought I saw him about yeah. 60. I was like, oh, he's, he's quite younger old. than content. Oh, that's different then. Yeah, no, it's different. He's, yeah, he's younger he's, direct he's football. I thought for some reason he was 68. And I was thinking, well, oh, he's got nothing to lose, has he? If he's 68, mm. go for it. But yeah, no. <laughs> reputation <laughs> is... It's reputation's key. massive. Yeah, it's key. Yeah. Yeah. Say 68, go for it, Mike. You know who's coming then. Roy <laughs> Hudson. <laughs> Roy Hudson. He's got nothing to lose, Roy Hudson. <laughs> It's a pension. Oh, come on, come on. Yeah, right. yeah. If the contract is signed right yet, yeah, and that means there's stipulations which they're holding out with each other on. And your concerns that you've raised just now, these are probably some of the things that he's probably put on the table and they're ironing Agreed. out right now. Yeah. I, I, and I think that's yeah. why it hasn't quite been signed, sealed and delivered. Everybody's saying it's 99%. But again, mm. until I see Spurs official come out and say, here we go, and Parachute is doing that thing where he's holding up the, the shirt and all the rest of that jazz... I'm not sure as of yet. I'm Listen, sure. holding the shirt's not even that. I want a press conference. It shirt means nothing because 
Just, I'm pretty, I'm pretty I, sure William was doing medicals, wasn't he? And he still exactly. didn't sign for us. So, yeah, yeah I'm, oh, I'm yeah. not convinced. <laughs> coming here. His first name is Fabio. But don't get as old as 60. Long. <laughs> so, Fabio's a youthful name, isn't he? Oh, dear. Maybe you've got to go from Derek Asdy. Um, Like, subscribe, share, comment. Thank you all for watching. It's been a brilliant show. Leave more comments after the show in the comment section below. If you see your first time watching, please hit that subscribe button if you've enjoyed the content and also share all this amongst your friends all around the world so we can go international. Uh, gentlemen, Sid, Mr. K, pleasure. Darius, Mike, as always, the pleasure is mine. And thank you all for your comments and thank you all for your insight. Good and brilliant. And we'll see you again soon. Take care.